This flying through life means that your passions and your purpose are in alignment. And when they're in alignment, amazing things I found started to happen. When you have a dream and you're living it, it's hard to tell the difference. When I left San Diego, I was defining myself by my political affiliation, by my religion, my color, you know, what I had, had done, what I had. And by the time I got back, I felt like I was defining myself by my, th my dreams, my you know, passions, um, the beauty that I saw around me. I didn't see people as different. I had changed. So I felt like I became a citizen of the world. It took 98 days and it was a record-setting flight. I did have people with me and one person in Europe and one in Australia, but the vast majority of it I was solo pilot, solo plane. And the fear that we carry with us takes away from your life, your dreams, your hopes, it ages and paralyzes you. And normally people like to run away from that fear. But what I decided to do is I would go deeper into it and I would give it a voice inside me and feel it 100%. To be quite honest, my greatest fear in this trip was ditching in the open ocean. During this trip, I was waking up with panic attacks in the middle of the night, just perspiring. And if you believe in an inner child, mine was talking to me very clearly. He was saying, this isn't fun anymore. I'm scared, I wanna go home. You know, certainly there were times in the cockpit when I'd look over in the right seat and there was nobody there and it was dark and I was over the ocean. And the question I always get is, is that the V for victory? And I say, no, that's the, oh my God, I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> so you're flying along, you know, over the open ocean, you're thinking things are going really well for you. And then all of a sudden you hear, boom, next to my left knee, I always had a knife in case I had to cut my way out. And I had a pair of swim goggles. And it was not because I was planning on doing laps in the Pacific. <laughs> It was because I was trying to keep the fuel out of my eyes if I did go down. And if you guys want to come up and try this thing on, you're welcome to. It will heat you up in about 30 seconds and then you'll think it's a torture device and maybe this isn't as fun as it sounded the first time. Before I left, we did a presentation for the Lindbergh Schweitzer Elementary School, fourth graders, and just so excited they could barely contain themselves. They were jumping up and down, they were, you know, shrieking and laughing, asking questions. One of the questions was, have you ever crashed? And the, uh, <laughs> the answer to that was no. And it was kind of cool because, you know, the kids really wanted to touch the plane, and most pilots don't like anybody touching their plane, right? So what we did is we lined them all up along the wings, and all at the same time we touched the plane, and it was, <laughs> it was a magical moment. I can fly The way this whole thing started was in this advanced graduate class in spiritual psychology, I was asked to dream impossibly big. And for me, it was to finish my um, commercial multi-engine instrument ratings, locate an aircraft, outfit it, and fly it around the world. And that was about three years ago. So what I want to finish up with is to ask you, what is your impossibly big dream and how are you going to go after it? It is my passion.